Okay, turn 17. 20 to 2 in the afternoon. Reinforcements arrived. It looks like we've got some isolated units. That's not great. And some rioted units. Alright, one way to look. Again, didn't look at the turn. Looks like it's all kicked off here. Oh my goodness. Yes, it has indeed. Um, well, we've got some random Prussians behind the lines. Um, some Dragoons, so I can't charge with anybody there. They're going to have to get into square. Going to have to get a few squares down here by the look of it. Uh, and he is just finally advancing. Okay. Ah, uh, you got his artillery up. That's probably what he's doing. Okay. Deal with that. No problem. Um, first glance. Keep our squares there, just because I... He probably... Well, you won't know about them. Annoyingly, that's sometimes... A, when you have routed units behind um, your lines or they're behind your lines uh, or gentlemen's agreement anyway however it's in our rules that if this was my if I was Devon for example and I had these units we've got to get them back to our own lines as best as possible without causing disruption or taking leaders and supply and victory points and things like that because it, I know Devon won't do it but it's my pet hate it's my pet hate. Um, skirmishers, random squadrons, leaders taking victory points at the other side of the map and things like that. It's not realistic. And I will often say, okay, there's your <laughs> termination bid for things like that. And I'm very busy, can't play you again. Um, that's what I do personally. It's, it's a, a very, very gamey tactic. But I know Devin wouldn't do that. So, moving up. What have we got up here? He has reached Nidus Gustav. Um... Or the outskirts of it. Artillery is within range. So look, not looking too bad there. What have we got with our Italians? Lots of cavalry by the look of it. Um, some routed French units. Okay, now you might have to go and sort them out. No major change really. Um, no idea where that cavalry has gone. Are they wiped off the face of the earth? Um, we'll just get them out of the way while we can, while I remember. Yeah, I, I ran into these guns and I would just assume they just disappeared. Can't see them anyway. Okay, um, Italian's not looking too bad. Business as usual, really. He's just to in and throw in and tit for tat. But that's good, so I don't mind that. And. No routed though. French. So the French attack up here was just useless. Just what a waste. But there we go. It could have gone the other way as well. So, and we've got some reinforcements coming in as well. That's good. Rem I must remind myself. I was going to say remind me. But I must remind myself to move this, these German, these Saxons across as well. They have got to go over here and then up to Mark Friedersdorf. Yeah. Last time I didn't do it. But... I will this time. Alright, I am going to crack on and get back to you in a few. Kind of all moved. Um, didn't take that long. Uh, reinforcements wise, uh, we've got our Chateau of Chevals and Hussars. They're carrying on up to Seahausen. Looks a bit of a mess here, but remember I am cutting across um, here and going through this low ground up and maybe hidden. Maybe I should have used the road, I don't know. Um, but that's my plan, so they're going to sort of deviate and divert off of the road through that, I'm going to call it a valley. And got some line troops coming up. Saxons, I did remember uh, to get them across the road. And there is some German infantry as well. And they're going to join those Saxons. So they arrived here in this hex, so I'm going to nip them across. There's the other Saxons. Um, and then there was one just annoying... Um, unit of lancers that disrupted on the road and just caused chaos for all my artillery so that's why they're a bit skew if uh right the poles uh, yeah not great i suppose we could fire on them just to make sure what i can't do is yeah, well that's what i'm trying to actually say um when this sort of thing happens inadvertently you can't really help it they see units that like i've got there hidden um, he might try and get his uh, routed lancers out the way, and he bumps into them. You sort of got like a drone view of everything, which is 
not realistic. It's not the end of the world. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. Um, I have one of those things. I eh? um, try to get everyone away, but of course they're isolated. And oh no, I didn't mean that. And zone of confidence is um, basically I'm trapped. So they're going to get annihilated by that horse artillery. Just because I can't get them anywhere. I um, managed to get these ones away a little bit. I uh, put some squares up, put another square there, another square there. We do have some guns, probably about 25 hexes too far though. Yeah, two hexes, two hexes. Aha, uh -huh, we can. 13, 40. Okay, so that's where we are at with the Poles and Germans. Pretty much, not too bad. I'm gonna get them as my reserves. Um, what have we got here at the bridges then? And Niederschulsdorf. Um, it's gonna have to be skirmishers. But we do have all this lovely artillery here. Might as well do it this view this time for a change. Not great, not great. And they're out. Oh, they're not facing. Not great again. And these guns just can't see anybody. Uh, they might start seeing these. Yeah, they can. Good. Not great, though. That's 563. We might have to start conserving ammo. Possibly. What are we on? 17. Caught up about a third of the way, maybe something like that. Um, I'll just be a bit wary of it. Um, uh, Ney has joined these routed French troops. One of them is absolutely knackered. The ones in the woods, yeah, they're absolutely shattered. And down to just above half strength. So Ney's going to sort them out, and they will just sort of act as back up in the woods a little bit. Uh, brought some skirmishes back to protect these guns, which can see all these juicy lancers. So. We'll get a bit of a revenge. Oh, nice. I think that wiped them out. Yeah. Okay. Um, fire on these guys. Um, what have we got in here? Guns and a calm. Uh, we've got there. Always load of opportunity fight here. Now I don't want everybody here, so Fontanelli, you can come back, rest with those chaps. Um what have you got here? No, they can't see them. They fired. Okay. Not really talkative today. Long day, quite tired. Um, where else have we got to skirmishes here? Uh, we've just got skirmisher on skirmisher. There's just batteries here. He's got one there. There, there, and overlooking there. Okay, so, who's the nearest of those chaps? Um, are they in artillery range? They are indeed. 30s and 40s. Not very good. Um, what I did do is uh, that unit I okay, that they're dead basically. Twenty three percent or six hundred and fifty odd um, fatigue, but they're gonna have to follow up the artillery and act as a square and that's probably the best what I don't want to do. I mean I do have these guys as well. I might actually bring them over as well. Just because I've got a bit of a gap opening up. I'm following up with cavalry, but I'm not going too far. Um, I unlimited some horse artillery. Too bad. I keep I've got no reason to push them off. I suppose I just for the sake of it. I think. I mean that's not the best idea. Just in case he does have more than and look. 
we had a battalion that I knew about and another one's appeared here. So he may have quite a few troops, for all I know in Jutteberg, creep up this road behind me and do me some harm. So I'm going to be a little bit savvy there. What else? That's about it, really, for this turn. Um, what are we doing for numbers? Starting to claw it back a little bit. Mind you, he's, I've lost double. Um, oh no, oh yeah, I have, I have lost double. Uh, he's lost double cavalry. Guns about even. Leaders, nobody's died yet. Oh, none of leaders. That's rather unusual. Usually, you'd have maybe one or two by now. We're, we're sort of careful with our leaders. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Not going too bad. Biggest concern is round here. Um, I'm expecting to hold. I'm definitely not going to counter attack in a minute until I can get some reinforcements up. And what are we on? 20 to 2. I said 2 o'clock. They're going to be running late. Let's call that 10 to 2, 2, 10 past, 20 past. More like half past 2. And that's only then leading elements, which I might have to set up before, depending on whether he pushes here. We've got some nice ground for artillery. We've got some nice open, well, <laughs> open fields um, for our cavalry. So we'll see. Seahousen, they'll probably get there about the same time, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and then maybe just sort of, as I've had said before, get some form of... Uh, concentration force here, something hidden by the woods, and then play it by ear, hit him on this flank, hit him up here, we'll see, but he's going all out now, he's still got a lot of reserves though, so he can take Niedersgersdorf and Wormsdorf and Goldsdorf without much trouble, because he's still got all this reserve up here. Interesting battle this one, I'm really enjoying it, it's um... Much better than their AI, that's for sure. <laughs> well, there we go. I'm going to send that back to Devon. And I will see you for turn 18. Good morning. Or oh, good afternoon in game, but good morning for me. Um, turn 18. Reinforcements, it's always good to see. So, what's he been doing? Pushing forward. Um, and he <laughs> bumped into my force. Uh, um, we kind of knew that would happen, or suspected it. It's just one of those things of the nuances of the game engine, let's say. Uh, not the end of the world. Pushing forward with the skirmishes for the Germans. Bit of a gap there. Oh, it's annoying that he's going to see everything hidden here. I'd rather he saw here than here. But, there we go. Um, he's pushed into Niedersgersdorf. And the French, uh, the Italians. Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> Pretty much the stalemate here. Business as usual. He has moved that cavalry away. I thought he might. Um, they have sorted one unit out. That's good. They need a bit of a rest though. And yeah, it's like business as usual. Um, I'm going to go straight to my reinforcements because it's just... I want to see what I'm getting. Uh, more Germans. Okay. So more Germans and... More Germans. Lots of Germans, but they're not the best quality and not very numerous. Um, so I might send these Germans up with my other Germans that are with the Poles. Multinational force, this. And uh, these Germans can just sort of carry on with all the other Germans up to Sea House and that area there. Like I said, concentration in force around here. If I'm clever enough. Uh, 70 hexes though, isn't it? He'll, he'll see me a mile off. Or 70 hexes off. But um, um, Avenue of Approach, I'd have to go, and I've sort of ruined it there, I'd have to go up and around the long way around, which I might do. Might get them on this road and go sort of straight, diagonal line, to Nandorf Bay Seda. And then up that road, because he can't see, unless he moves. Yeah. And then that would all be for nothing, so... I might just do business as usual. Even if he sees them, then he's going to have to draw something off from here to uh, sort of keep a watch on them or counteract what I've got coming. So it will relieve the pressure. It's not all about just fighting. Sometimes just manoeuvring. So somebody sees something, you think, oh, better not just go all in there. 
too many people, not too many, but a lot of people just think, oh, attack, 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 or defend, defend, defend. That's what I've got to do. Not on these longer ones, short scenarios maybe, but not now. A lot of it depends on the victory conditions as well. Like for some scenarios, some scenarios, I swear, they're just impossible to win. Um, and, and you have to go all in from the start. The Wagram, um, I don't know if anybody's doing the Wagram tournament. That's a good example. Uh, it's a variant of the Aspen battle. And I'm the Austrians, and I think the only way you can win is to go from the start all in with pretty much everything you've got and just blitz the French. Absolutely hate playing like that. Um, but I think I've mentioned before, I won't be too bothered if I lose <laughs> the Pi Crime tournament or I'm just not progress or whatever. Um, that's why I don't play Borodino anymore either. Um, I, I, yeah, it's not my game style. I'm in it for the journey, not just for the. I, I don't care. The, Devin absolutely smashes me. I've had fun along the way. It's all about the taking part. And it genuinely is. I I love the discussions. I love the what went wrong. The the chat in between. Um, justifying the house rules. The historic chats and all that sort of stuff. That's why I play it. Not for winning. Not for losing. And to be honest, as I said, it allows me to go back to my childhood. And this is my version of pushing toy soldiers around the carpet. I'm just doing it on the comfort of a chair now and on a computer screen and they take care of the dice rolls and sound effects. Alright, I'm going to crack on and see you in a few. So we'll start with the reinforcements, the boring bits. Um, looks a bit chaotic around there, but it's not. Um, we've got troops there splitting up, pull them on the road. I'm going to pull some of them across there as well just to make their way up the valley. Um, I'm going to take some up the road because A... You'll be able to see them and B, they'll probably get there quickest and we might need some reinforcements there anyway. Um, troops are coming up as well and uh, Germans are moving across slowly and sh um, but surely. And yeah, that's about it for them. Um, around here then, I try to get my polar stances, got them into protection of the squares but annoyingly... These guys don't have any movement points left to do anything, really. These poor guys are going to get sacrificed. I think the, their buddies, their squadron that were there with before, have also been just obliterated. So, what I can do, though, is fire on... Oh, big old... He has got some big uh, squadrons. 1770... Um, Devin, um, he said to me in his email return, you know, we, we do chat not so much in any detail, but he said he keeps bumping into my troops. Well, Devin, when you watch this back, that's kind of the point. <laughs> that's why they were placed where they were. Um, you just came a turn or two early, um, or one or two turns too early for for my plan here. Um, so I'm going to have to make do. <laughs> um, oh, we ca so, cavalry charges... Um, I think I mentioned our house rule is that cavalry needs space to form up, to get on the trot, to get a canter, and then finally charge. So we're going to have one clear hex between what we want to charge and the unit we're charging with. So for example, in this case, I couldn't charge these dragoons. Okay, I couldn't anyway, the game wouldn't let me, they're disordered. Let's say they weren't, perfect world. I couldn't charge from this hex to this hex. I would have to be sort of here, 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 here. We can, however, just melee from an adjacent hex, because you're sort of punished for that anyway. You don't get the um, three times bonus. Um, so what I will do, just to to get rid of them, melee. And they're disordered, okay? We can't attack with disordered units, unless leader is in the same hex. So it is above board. Um, okay, so square, square, square. They're good. We do have some guns here now. What's he got? 1550. Not a counter fire. It's about all we can do there. Right, what have we got in Nidus Gusdorf? Um, we have to be there. These three pounders, they might as well not have them, to be honest. Oh, low ammo. Mm. And that's a withdrawal, because I'll bring you forward. Uh, there you go. Um, 
And another one, another one. However, we do have a unit there, which is good, handy. <laughs> For the sake of one man. And um, we do have our grand battery, though, which we're going to get in. Well, grand battery, I say. Our main battery, let's say. Oh, not too bad this time. Not the best, but not the worst by any stretch. Um, and you probably start to see some troops coming down here as we did last time. Yep. And our pop guns here. Possibly. Oh, they can. No effect. Didn't think so. Uh, I put Nay in with that other battalion or another battalion that has routed. Um, we do have some guns that can see these guys. I'd say they're very depleted. I wouldn't say they're skirmishes, but they could be, I suppose. Oh, no, they can't be, yeah. But they are very depleted. Uh, okay, they're absolutely knackered. Um, and this is the bit we get a lot of opportunity fire in return. Or defensive fire, even. Uh, not so much this time. Pop guns. I literally didn't move, I hate that word, um, I actually didn't really move anybody in the woods at all, it was just sort of a bit of reorganising, as I said, I'm, I'm holding them down, not going forward with them. What we do want is cavalry, 30s and 40s. No effect, oh, that's why, right. three pounders. Probably scared the horses a little bit, but that's about it. Uh, we've got some skirmishes in there. Bring those guns up. Move my squares forward a little bit. Just to sort of even out the line. What's he got there? Um, but other than that, just sort of shuffled forward with everyone. Got to leave somebody here just in case. Um, I've got to move these troops. Just in case somebody does come from Jutteberg. You never know. You might have a an ace up his sleeve and have a whole core up there or something. I doubt it. But look, there's more there than I predict. Well, I'm predicting those troops. There. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, he might have a sizable force there, which I'm predicting. Um, maybe not a core, but there's certainly troops at that victory point last time. Um, and I've got a missing squadron somewhere <laughs> that would just disappeared. They haven't reported back yet, so there's something out there. Um, I think that's pretty much all I can do. Skirmish for skirmish's sake. Supplies okay. Um, May will hopefully sort them out. Yeah, that's, that's about it, really. It's happy enough. Just, again, this is the only area that's causing me real concern. A, because he's got quite a lot of troops there, quite a lot of horses. And B, my reinforcements are not going to be there for another three or four turns, something like that. So, do we have anything else coming in? Um, units. Yeah. Two o'clock. What's have we got or not? Looks like more Germans. Saxons, Saxons, Saxons. So, we've got a steady stream. Pretty much all afternoon coming in. So, hold off, hold off, hold off. I don't know about his reinforcements, just bloody Swede, I would have thought. No sign of it, that's the other thing, need to get some scouts out. Might use some of these as scouts to have a look at all these roads, sell them Melensdorf and Kurslipsdorf, send them all out. Alright, I'm going to send this back to Devin, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for comments. Congratulations to Mark Trowbridge, you won the voucher for John today, I'll get that over to you today. Um, his after action report was... Epic, basically. Um, didn't have many replies, but his was a worthy winner, nonetheless. Um, pages and pages of it, but all good reading. So if you haven't seen it, um, have a look at it on my Facebook page. Um, the probably on it, PC Wargamers. Have a read of it. And, um, yeah, well done. Matthew Waddington came in second place, um, and he went a copy of 60 Battles. Um, that was also a very good after-action report. 
Might do another one at Christmas. We'll see how we go. All right. On that note, I shall sign off and see you soon.